In this video, we're gonna talk about some major updates to Adobe Spark Post. I've been using this app for, I don't know, probably since it came out, beta version. It has grown into a full-on design app. Hey everybody, this is Michael Cohen, the Tech Rabbi, and welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, please consider subscribing. And of course, if you find value in this video at any point in time, you can give it a like. And if you have some questions, you can use the comment section below. I have been in love with Adobe Spark Post for a number of years. I put out some tutorials, and I look back at these tutorials, and I'm like, I need a new tutorial. This is outdated. So what are we waiting for? Let's start creating design in Adobe Spark Post. I'm using the web version, and all the features that I'm gonna talk about are also found on the mobile version, at least in iOS. I cannot confirm nor deny anything Android as that is not my mobile platform of choice. But I wanna run through a couple different features, and I'm not gonna go in depth in how to use Adobe Spark Post because I already have a tutorial that I'm gonna link in the description. You can also check it out on the i up there in the right corner because that's gonna go super in depth and you're gonna learn how to use uh, the platform. But here, I just wanna update you with some really cool new features that I just think are super powerful to create dynamic and just really awesome looking designs. So the first is that you are able now inside of Adobe Spark Post to remove a background. I cannot express how epic that is because you were either going into Photoshop or you were going into you know, remove.bg, the website, and you basically have, you, there's no way to get around leaving the app you're trying to use, going to another app, then having to fix it, edit it, download it, and then upload it. It is a huge pain. And so when you find a photograph, so we're just gonna go over here and we're going to add a photograph. We're gonna search the free photos. And I searched fun here. Ooh, look at this one here. This, um, I don't know, I think this one's gonna be interesting because there is so much going on in the background that I think it will probably have a hard time. So we are gonna try that design. So you wanna move freely, of course, with this image, which is also, just so you know, a, a relatively new feature when you look at um, you know the past three or four months where you used to have this pin the background and if you got lucky you could trick the system into letting you upload a PNG with no background and it would let it become a floater or move freely so now you just get to pick it and it's super awesome so we have this photograph here okay uh, it doesn't really go with the color scheme of the rest of the design but I want to see what this remove background beta feature is made of. So we're gonna do this right now. We're gonna see how well it identifies the person and these balloons against this very colorful brick background. So you hit that remove background. It's gotta think for a moment. Wow, that's insane. I mean, I, look, that, it, that is absolutely insane. That's totally insane. First of all, if you were using Photoshop back in the day, th this would just take you forever, forever to do. And now it just, I mean, it literally just did it for you. You didn't even have to wonder, like, is it gonna mess up the whites over here? Or was there, so you got a little bit of yellow here because it just, it couldn't, it would have pulled everything out. So that's fine. Wow, look at that. Well, there you go. That's how you do it. So now, to the rest of the design. So what I've done is I have popped out these different elements, even this one right here. So what I like to do is I'll actually double up the image and then I'll remove the background of one of them. So you can now get this text to hide a little bit and hide just enough so that you can read it, but it's got some style. It's got something, you know, that's a little interesting. And you, you did, I did the same thing over here with this one here. And it just ends up creating these really cool kind of dynamic elements where text is overlaid with the images, it breaks it up, it makes it a little interesting. And it once, you know, it kind of draws your eye to different parts and you just wanna keep your eye there. That's removed background. I think that that is just super great. Now, 
over here, let's say I need to move her around and you know, I've really kind of perfected like the placement and the size of this thing with her. And I don't want to have to move it around every single time. So I can click on this object and then on the web, I can click on the second object. And now I have this group tool and I can group it and you can actually group groups and that works as, you know, works quite fine as well. So now I can, you know, move around just with the, with the arrow keys and get like a fine tuned move. And I don't have to worry about these objects not having the connection. Now look at this. Okay. Here's an example of just be prepared and don't freak out what happened. Okay. I have these objects, including this one are all on separate layers, right? They're layered. So over here, it happened to be that the light bulb and the person were both on top of this layer. This text layer was in between these two. And so what ended up happening is that it went to, it, it picked whichever one was in front of it. And you know, now you just have to change the order and you know, that's okay. That works, you know, no harm, no foul. But you should just know you should be prepared. So that's the grouping. I think that that's super awesome, super easy. Now over here, this text, I'm really impressed with this feature here, but I just want to let you know the disclaimer. So they've, they've created templates for text that are going to let you create some pretty awesome looking text designs that are just like ready to go and look great. You got your quotes, you got really powerful titles. So I just wanted to run through uh, the, basically the background removal and the grouping and then the text template. There's all these different, you know, features and ways to mess around with the designs. You can, you know, repin this. You have shape, right? Uh, the shape crop, okay? Where you can actually go in and you can crop the shape of the design uh, and that's super awesome. You also have the ability to um, restore the background. So what if you were like, Let's ungroup this for a second, okay? What if you were like, well, wait a second. Wait a second, I, I, I didn't wanna remove that background, I changed my mind. Well, guess what? You get to do that, okay? So that's cool. You can restore the background, right? That's super important. That's basically the rundown. I just had to share that because I wanted to make sure everybody's up to date with like the latest and the greatest of design and creativity software and I thought it was just pretty awesome that you now have these super powerful features inside of Adobe Spark Post. So thanks so much for watching. If you found value in this video and you made it this far, please consider subscribing, giving it a like, and of course, if it brought value and taught you something new, share it with a friend. Thanks so much for watching. Till next time.